What's up guys? Welcome back. We're kind of still in this funky framing situation, at least until I move you guys in, but something about me really likes the asymmetry of it. I'm really sorry if it drives you nuts, but the lighting is really good, so I just don't want to jinx it. Anyway, today guys, we are going to be playing with the new eyeshadow palette from Wayne Goss. I also picked up his mascara. I will be putting it on and I will be telling you guys about my experience with it. This thing is kind of annoying to open. This is the Pearl Luxury Eye Palette that Wayne Goss has just put out. I did really like Imperial Topaz. I did not get his second one because it was in cool tones and had a royal blue in it and had a repeat black shade in there that I was just like, I'm not gonna get much use out of that. I wouldn't be able to make it look good regardless if I were gonna give it a review. But when I saw this come through, <laughs> I was like, um, is this a love letter directly to me? I mean, obviously not like it just speaks to the fact that my needs are similar to a lot of other people's needs and wants from a color story in a palette, but like, that's the most me six shades I have ever seen. And naturally I came into this with really, really high hopes. You know, I always talk about that. It's like, sure, we all come in with preconceived notions, but I feel like it's even riskier to be super, super excited about a product because then it is that much more disappointing if it doesn't work out. So I'm going to move you guys in. We're going to do an eye look. I have most of my makeup on at this point with the exception of that. And then we're going to talk pricing, claims, comparison. I'll swatch it next to the, some things that I think are relevant to swatch it next to. We'll put the mascara on, I'll talk about the mascara, all that, and we will close with my final thoughts. So let's go ahead and jump into the Wayne Goss Luxury Eye Palette in Pearl. Pearl, Pearl, I'm trying to be too fancy. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I just, this happened and the lighting seems to be very accurate. Like you can see my actual face in the color that it seems to actually be in real life, which is more than I can say for a lot of my lighting situations. So Wayne Goss, if you are unfamiliar, he is a long-standing creator here on the platform and he has come out with many, many things. Some lip glosses, lipsticks, blush palettes, eyeshadow palettes, lip liners, eyeliners. Now we have this eyeshadow palette and the new mascara, which is a waterproof mascara. But this is the first one that has been, you know, anywhere close to this color story. I didn't grab everything that I needed to grab before I sat down. All right, I've got Imperial Topaz here and I want you guys to see the comparison. So not only are we dealing with, you know, a much cooler color story, but also these are a lot less saturated. So actually these two are very similar. It's a similar concept in the sense of, you know, a light shade, a shimmer shade, this celestial shade that he does that is just so, his celestial formula is unbelievable, but he skipped the black. We have this really interesting silvery gray tone. And even though it is cool, I feel like some are cooler than others, which is how I prefer a palette to be put together because even if you have a cool leaning skin tone or you are good at wearing cool tones, that doesn't necessarily mean you want your entire eye look to be cool tones because warm and cool in contrast to one another will create an illusion that something is either coming forward or receding from the eye and you need relative cool and warm temperatures in order to create that illusion. That was the issue that I ran into with this palette was, first of all, they were just too saturated for my skin and I've had a little bit of trouble with that. I don't think that like that is something that translates across the board. It was just more pigmented than I expected it to be. The formulas are still gorgeous. I still get plenty of use out of it. But the other part was they were all warm. <laughs> I needed something that was a little bit gray, a little bit grungy in order to kind of put shadow back into the crease because everything just was the same temperature. And so this having, you know, a difference. Like this white is not particularly cool. It's kind of like a neutral pinky white. We have this very cool gray, just a nice neutral beigey lavender. And then this nice like cool, I would say, what is that? Like a cool chocolate kind of color. And then just this hmm, really, really nice in between, I mean, you have to kind of almost take that out of context in order to even observe what color it is. It's like a neutral patina gold. And then obviously this just bonkers celestial shade. And I will just swatch 
those two, the Shimmer and the Celestial for now, because I'm gonna swatch all of them against the ones I wanna compare them to later on in the video. I have the two Aether Rose Quartz palettes and the um, Venetian Rose palette from M Cosmetics to compare to it, but the others are all matte, and these two are very similar in shade, but the Celestial obviously has that really, really lovely, like crazy light catching reflection. So let's go ahead and get to putting this on my face, shall we? And it feels only appropriate to be using Wayne Goss eyeshadow brushes for this. This is how I initially was introduced to his makeup offering at all. I've been watching his channel for a long time, but he came out with cruelty-free brushes and I snatched them up. I cannot recommend them highly enough. They are too lovely. All right. If you are new to my channel, let me just go ahead and say, I'm trying to like cloak my final thoughts here so that there's any reason to watch the video, but I will give away a little bit of my hand and say, that right there is one of my favorite shades to have in any palette ever, because it is, once it gets on my skin, it neutralizes a lot of yellow in my skin because it has that nice lavender to it. And it kind of just looks like a very, very native shade that would already exist in my eyelid. And I always say, regardless of your skin tone, it's easier to work with colors that are close to your skin tone. So this might not work for everybody, but these colors are very close to my skin tone. That is why I felt like this was a love letter from Wayne to Khaki. So starting with that lavender shade, and this is just going to be my old fashioned transition shade. And I might put more blush on when I get done if I feel like I need to bring a little bit more pink or purple or whatever into my face, but we will see how it goes. These blend like a dream, and even though they are pigmented in the sense that they're not skippy, the shades themselves are not super duper saturated. So I would, you know, compare it in that sense to the Aether Rose Quartz palette, something that I can use straight from the pan as a pale girl. And the very, very light shade is not white, but it does do a really good job because it honestly, like if you look at that, that's basically my skin tone, right? <laughs> like for some people that's gonna look like chalk white on them, but like for me, that is what I call like an eraser shade because if I kind of go too far in one direction or another, I can just dip my brush in that white cream color and it will blend the edges as if I'm just painting my skin back on. <laughs> It's a weird way to put it, but you know what I mean. It's kind of like when you find that perfect concealer shade and you say, oh my gosh, it's like I'm painting on better skin. That's what that cream color is like. And if you are unsure as to whether this is a color palette or a color story that flatters your skin, as far as undertones are concerned, there are a lot of reasons that something like this would look good on you or not look good on you. It's not necessarily like you have to have my undertones or my skin tone to appreciate this. It's just gonna look different. So if you already have cool undertones, you're gonna see a lot more of the purple in that. Whereas I have kind of neutral, I get a little yellow here and there, and then I can wear cool tones, but it's mainly because the cool tones, especially purples, counterbalance the yellow in my skin and it makes a really, really nice pink, like I said. And that's sort of the roundabout way that I had to figure out the colors that worked on my skin is because I was kind of trying to match my skin with my palettes a lot of times and like warm ended up too warm. It's like how a perfume changes the way that it smells on everybody. It's not just about the color that you're painting on your eyes when you're working with something like this. If you're working with like green, like a solid Crayola green and you put like a white primer on underneath it, then you're going to get a true hue out of that green, most likely, you know, if you apply a completely opaque primer underneath it or something. But most of the time you are going to be dealing with the way that a color interacts with what you're putting it on top of. So that's gorgeous. Like I could just put eyeliner and mascara on and one and done, have this just negative space here, totally fine, totally fine. I am going to use every shade in this palette because it does lend itself pretty well to that. I'm gonna go in next with the brown shade. They're just numbered one through six, so there's no names here. I'm gonna go with this lovely medium, it's, it's like a dusty chocolate, you know, because it has gray in it. It's kind of a mucky chocolate. And I'm going to paint right above my crease with that. I paint above my crease because I have such deep set eyes that if I just stick the brush right in my crease, you won't really see the brown and it won't really create an illusion. 
And then when I put something on my lid, it'll all just kind of muddy together and it doesn't really work. And I also am always careful with a crease shade like this that I am kind of intending to build that shadow illusion with to not close my eye off on either side. I'm not like sticking it right on the corner either way. I'm sort of just keeping the brush on the outside and it keeps my eye open. I have very small eyes that are pretty close together. And with makeup, you don't ever really have to like notice that, you know, if you look at Kylie Jenner, you probably think she has like the biggest eyes in the world. She's like me. She's got very small eyes that are pretty close together, but she makes it happen <laughs> with like a lot of like light bending techniques, Photoshop, you know, after the fact, but also like lashes and things like that. So it can be, it can be done and it doesn't have to always be done to that extent. It can be done subtly. So I'm using that a little bit on the outside of my underneath lashes right here. And I don't know if my skills have improved or whether this is just a really, really nice formula, but like, I just feel like it blends itself. And I guess you would expect this, but like his brushes work really well with his formulas. So now I'm going to go in with the gray, which was the shade that probably, if anything, made me nervous about this color story. It was that because I was like, this could easily be a little bit too cool. It's hard to explain this color. It's like a gray that has just the tiniest bit of taupe in it, just a little itty bitty bit. And it makes it kind of a rich gray. <laughs> going to basically take that and I'm going more on the outer V here, building a little bit of shadow on the outer corner onto the lid. Thanks, so. And you could use any of these as a one and done. I could go for like a smoky eye just using this gray, but I think that the main thing that I want to point out here is that this gray is not scary, at least for me. You know, it's not so cool toned that it looks really like ashen on my skin. And always making sure to kind of take a step back from the mirror every once in a while and make sure that it still makes sense in context. Sometimes we get so close to the mirror, plucking our eyebrows, doing our lip liner, putting on our eyeshadow, whatever, that when we step back, we're like, well, that doesn't make sense. You know, I was kind of concentrating on too small of an area and didn't, didn't really mind the composition of the rest of my face. And it's just so important to look directly into the mirror. Make sure that you're actually creating the illusion that you're going for, you know? Make sure that you're selling the garment. Okay, as I mentioned before, I can take this shade, which is basically my skin tone, and use that to not just blend the edges, but also to conceal a little bit, increase the opacity of what is already my skin tone so that um, you're not, like the eye isn't distracted by the veins and stuff like that on my face just makes it all look a little bit more intentional. I tend to get really, really sallow right here because that skin is just so thin that you can see all my blood vessels through it. My kid actually, I don't know where he got this, like how, like he must've inherited something like this from me, but he actually has a vein that in, through the like light skin on his nose, he has a blue vein that runs directly across the middle of his nose, the way that like Gabrielle Alvarez does like that neon line. Like that's what, that's what my kid's like vein looks like. It's pretty cool. I could do my makeup like my son. He has like a little stork bite over one of his eyes. His angel kisses on his forehead and he has that blue vein across his middle of his nose. It's a look and he's super rosy cheeks. All right, so those are the mattes. And then all that there is left to play with are the lovely shimmers that I swatched for you in the beginning. I'm going to take the flat brush, the 06, and I'm going to dip that into the satin shade, not the celestial yet. This did surprise me, it's a little bit more gold than I expected it to be. I thought it was going to be a little bit more pink and I don't mind it at all. I just wanted to point out that it is not for me an inner corner or brow highlight shade. It's a very, very pretty satin tone and 
bear in mind, a lot of times it's great to have a nice neutral satin tone like that in your palette because you can mix it with other things to make them spread more easily on the skin. So if you are kind of afraid of any shade in any palette, that's a Lisa J trick actually, um, that's where I learned it at least, was to, you know, if you have like putting on black eyeshadow or something, although for a lot of people, like putting black eyeshadow on is like, you either do it right or it's like, you have to wash your whole face. If you mix it with something that has some shimmer to it, it will make it spread more easily and also just make it like go on a little more slowly so you can pace yourself. So um, yeah, you can like take this and mix it with that fair shade and kind of without putting too much shimmer on, just blend on top of everything and it's going to soften everything in a really nice way. But I'm gonna take a little more of that Go underneath because it does have enough pigment to it that it's not just a texture on the skin, or at least not on my skin. So pretty, so ultra pretty, but I will be using my face highlighter as an inner corner highlight. And then I'm going to actually take a little bit of the gray and mix it with the brown and just drive that home. The outer third here, make sure we get enough saturation there. They do stick to themselves really nicely too. It's a great formula. And I'm glad that it translates as well as it does to something that's a little bit less pigmented or a little bit less saturated because his older palettes, like, yes, they stuck, they were gorgeous, they spread beautifully, but like, it was a lot of pigment and there was really no going back. So this is a lot easier for me to work with. And then finally, the thing we've all been waiting for, right? The sparkle of it all. I mean, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's what it looks like on my finger. So, using that as a texture, not, you know, not the only makeup brand that has this texture. You know, uh, Pat McGrath does some really beautiful celestials and uh, Charlotte Tilbury does some beautiful celestials. His are really soft. I find that Pat McGrath's are really impactful, but they have more of like a confetti feel to them and <laughs> the ones from Charlotte Tilbury are very much more subtle and they're like a little bit like tough to get out of the pan sometimes. His are really emollient and creamy. And they, since they spread so easily, you can kind of build them up and get color out of them if you want to, or you can just use them as a texture. I feel like the Pat McGrath ones are really hard to almost just get like a finish from because they are so dense. At least the ones that I have in the Divine Rose palette. Oh my God, that reminds me, I need to order Hold please. I'm going to order the other one real quick. This can't wait. Take my money, Mama Pat. Thank you for your order. <laughs> so the Pat McGrath Utopian Dream Mothership 9 is now on order. Uh, so look forward to that. But regardless, the Celestials, that's all I was saying is just, there's some differences between the Celestials. Now, I am going to take a little bit of this on the pants brush. A Wayne Goss pencil brush. This is my Flex Highlighter from Milk Makeup and someone brought to my attention that they think that lit this shade right here is actually discontinued and I'm like really sad about that I'm sorry it's a beautiful formula though my hope is that they actually just like renamed them or something and there's still a pale enough one but it is so beautiful and there is always the aether one the aether one is not as uh, finely milled but it does give you that same kind of magical reflection I'm gonna put a little bit of that up here And that, friends and family, is the extent of the eyeshadow. I'm going to time lapse through my eyeliner and then come back to the mascara. All right, I'm calling that good. <laughs> there is, I should point that out, there isn't really a shade in the Wayne Goss palette that I would necessarily use as an eyeliner all on its own. Like I could use any of the kind of matte darker shades, darker, as a backdrop for an eyeliner or something, but I'm not gonna get like a thicker eyelash illusion from that. So let's talk about this mascara. This is not my first rodeo with this mascara. I actually wore this 
into the city yesterday. I took a two hour each way train ride and then some subway rides, some in the wrong direction, just for good measure. I met up with my friend Kate in the city and it was quite hot and I decided that it was a very good opportunity for me to test out this mascara. So this is his The Waterproof Mascara and I'm pretty sure it only comes in black and I was interested to try it even though I am a tubing mascara girl. Sometimes brands will call something waterproof or say that it's flake free, smudge free, whatever. And it's their way of saying that it is a tubing mascara. And I was kind of like crossing my fingers at that, that there was gonna be that technology. It is not the case. And honestly, I'm an I don't wanna put this on. I'm going to for science and for you guys. And if you are a waterproof mascara person, I don't want to be like, and I shut out all other preferences because I have a preference. It is just that I'll stick a picture in. Yes, I put it to the test, a hot day in New York City, but it's still smudged all over the top of my eyes. And when I say the getting it off of my eyeballs last night was a pain in the neck, it was a pain in the neck. I used three different balms and like soaps and stuff and lots of eye rubbing and things like that to get it off. And it is likely that I am just unaccustomed to the ceremony start to finish of a waterproof mascara because I am so used to tubing mascaras and tubing mascaras don't always work for everybody. I understand that. And this doesn't irritate my eyes or anything like that, but it is just like, I don't have any patience. <laughs> I don't have any patience for, uh, for, you know, taking off waterproof mascara. And I was just really frustrated because at least if you're going to make it that tough to get it off, it shouldn't smudge. And it did. It smudged everywhere. Not underneath my eye, only over my eye. And I was wearing it with his eyeshadow. It wasn't like I was wearing a cream eyeshadow or something. Now, unlike a tubing mascara, I have found that this does a really good job when you let it dry completely and then go in for another coat. So I'm going to just do my little brown mousse real quick. I actually already have on brow pencil. I'm using the Refi brow pencil today. And uh, I'm just gonna go with my boy brow here while my lashes dry. Okay, second coat, ready go. There are a lot of reasons that people wear waterproof mascaras, obviously events and things like that. But I think the main one that I have heard of is like an everyday thing is just for people who have a tough time holding a curl on their lashes. That is the other reason I wanted to make sure to show you guys this because like I said, everybody's got different needs and different preferences on mascaras. It does not build hunky chunky volume really like quickly at all. You would almost need to like powder them in between coats or something in order to get that. So just fly. But the wand is actually really nice. It's like pretty easy to get that very, very close to your lash line because the little po the little pokies are very short. So I don't get it like through my lashes quite as much. All right, and the last step here, I did want to throw it back to some Wayne Goss lip products. So I have his sepia pencil right here and I figured I would just kind of decide what uh, lip gloss I wanted to go with when I got my eyes done. So let's see. This was his first release, was the lip release, and that was when I fell in love with just his taste, you know, for a formula. That might be a little too. I'm gonna use hibiscus. Now, do not be afraid. If you've never seen this before, it looks like it's gonna be almost metallic, but what it does is it actually just distorts the light and enhances your lips and makes them look plumper. So like, at first you're like, oh God, is that a, iridescent, like pearly, like nail polish. But then as it spreads out, you start to see the illusion. Super precise little applicator. You can put on as little or as much as you really want. And it is just a normal lip gloss formula. It's not, you know, a liquid lip balm or anything, but it's also not crazy heavy or crazy sticky. And I like to just take my finger and blend it with the lip liner so that I don't end up with like a super obvious line. You see, as it like chills out on my lips, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but like, I love that it's not obviously really metallic. And it's a really unique shade, the way that the light hits it, it kind of mimics that celestial shade. 
on my lids. All right, I'm gonna move you guys out just a little bit and we will chat pricing, claims, and my final thoughts. All right, so this stuff is sold exclusively on Beautylish. I'm a huge fan of Beautylish as a company. Their customer service is phenomenal and they are also the masterminds behind the Good Molecule skincare line, which is like one of my favorite skincare lines. It's like my favorite affordable skincare line. So the Wayne Goss, the luxury eye palette pearl. It's $55? Is that the price that they always were? Yeah, I guess so. When I ordered the Imperial Topaz collection, I ordered it with three eyeliners. So I ordered it as a set, so I'm not really sure, but I guess they were always 55. For some reason I thought they were 45, but I guess that is uh, the price on the blush. It's $55. And you get an abundance of product, but it's only six shades. That's definitely something to weigh in your decision making as to whether this is a concise enough color story. Like if the conciseness of the color story is what appeals to you versus something like the Aether Rose Quartz palette, for example, because there are more shades. So I'll get to that in a second. So it says an essential eyeshadow palette with six shades in matte satin and shimmer finishes, pink beige with a matte finish, pearl beige with a satin finish, soft pink with a matte finish, soft brown with a matte finish, taupe brown with a matte finish, and sparkling peach with a shimmer finish. Why it's special, six shades handpicked by makeup artist Wayne Goss for an easy, enchanting, bridal inspired look. I did watch his video, but it's been a minute <laughs> since I watched his like introduction video on this and it was a pretty quick one, I feel like. Yeah. I, have, I, I have mascara all underneath my eye. Why don't you guys tell me? A little trick here. You just take a spoolie. If it's dry, it'll usually just come right off. Although this is an aggressive formula. <laughs> waterproof and spoolie proof apparently yes bridal makeup that's kind of what this is supposed to be for it's like you know better than real life but also just like extremely feminine you know like the whole like just you know pinks and purples and pearls and all that stuff it just feels very bridal micronized powder particles and smooth blending emollients give the pressed powder formula a silky feel and the incredible blendability in just a few strokes extra large pans size fits every type of brush and i really do actually notice a difference with the emollients of these shadows especially the celestial shade that is the the one like that's kind of what i was trying to articulate is just the way that it spreads the way that it feels when you're touching it like it just has a really really nice like not it's not a cream it's definitely still a powder but a creamy quality to it so let me swatch this real quick just some of the more i'll swatch all the shades because they're only six and then i will put them up against some relevant comparisons from other palettes okay so right here in the center these are all of wayne goss's the six right here so these are the four mattes and there's the celestial and there is the shimmer this side right here is the M Cosmetics Venetian Rose palette. So those are the three mattes from her palette. This one is, I wanna say $45, and there are only six shades in it as well, three mattes and three shimmers. I put those three shimmers down here, and you can see that they are quite a bit in the more like just purely pink direction, like more saturated pinks. Whereas this one's a little bit, it's, it's a little bit silver, but it's definitely still pink, but they're not kind of going in that sort of like purple lavender undertone direction as much. It definitely is compared to other things, but compared to what else I have on my arm, it looks relatively warm. Isn't that interesting? And these are some of my favorite kind of cool tone right for the pan palettes, basically. And then I just, you know, I went ahead and just did the most recent iteration of the Aether Rose Quartz palette. If you are looking for a comparison from the old one to this current one, I did just do that. So I, you know, I will put a card or a link down below or something um, for your reference, but this is just the one that you are, is available right now. And um, basically I didn't swatch every single one of them, but these three are the mattes that were retained between the two palettes. So if you have the old one, these are in there. If you have the new one, these are in there. Those are the three mattes that they kept. And I just wanted to point out how much cooler the Aether palette is than this Wayne Goss palette, okay? That is something that I think is a very relevant comparison if you're like, okay, I can't really tell the difference looking one to the other. Here they are next to each other. Wowzers. This is just so much more neutral, not warm, but neutral when you look at it in comparison to those rose quartz swatches. Like it's just, it's such a cool tone palette. So then, you know, you get into like these four right here are the rest of the shimmery, not the rest, but most of the shimmery shades from that palette. I think there's only one that I didn't swatch because that's nine and there are 10 total. 
I think the only one that I didn't swatch is just the white one. So let's, I'll do that one real quick. So you can see basically from here to here are the Aether swatches. And they are absolutely beautiful, really, really shimmery, kind of all the same formula. There's no celestial, for example, it's just this really, really pretty shimmer, but uh, they are still cooler in tone, even though I do feel like they lean a little bit in that bridal direction too, but just cooler in tone if your skin needs that or if that flatters your skin better um, than the Wayne Goss. But as far as saturation is concerned, I would say that the Venetian Rose from M Cosmetics leans more saturated across the board. Therefore, I think that if that is your undertone, it's going to work on more skin tones. So after all that swatching, I think that I'm ready to hop into my final thoughts on this. So again, not a first impression by any means. I literally washed my face and put this eyeshadow palette on the moment that it arrived. I got the notification on my phone and I was like, drop everything I'm putting on the new Wayne Goss palette because I was that excited about it. Now, that means my expectations were up here instead of middle. How do I feel in contrast to those expectations? It is so perfect. It is so utterly perfect. It is, I know I say this sometimes for other palettes, but it's always for the same reason. It's me in a palette. It's like if I were to pick six shades, if I were smart enough to do it, and these are so ultra dialed in, especially knowing that what he was going for was like a bridal look because I feel like you can get such a very pretty look out of this eyeshadow palette. There is absolutely no learning curve whatsoever. <laughs> you know, each color looks like, I mean, maybe I'm speaking from a place of kind of like a, an unknown known, you know, maybe I have more experience than I'm giving myself credit for, but the when I look at that palette as anybody who looks at an eyeshadow palette and tries to kind of like, oh, I'd go here, then go here, then go here, then go here. I've done, you know, plenty of reviews on eyeshadow palettes where I'm like, I don't know where to go with this, you know, like they don't make any sense. And I kind of like, I felt like I hit a lot of dead ends in his first palette. This one's so intuitive. There's nothing confusing about it. It is super straightforward. It's beginner friendly. The saturation and the pigmentation are very, very user friendly. Again, not for every single person because he didn't include a black in there, but like, I think that, you know, there is something to be said for finding something that works really, really well for you instead of someone always putting out things that are right down the middle and doesn't really work especially well for anyone. And uh, for me, like I said, this was like too khaki from Wayne with love. This is just such a perfect six pan eyeshadow palette. And the fact that I don't have to even like stretch my imagination to use every single shade in the palette every single time I open it means that it is actually a complete idea. It is a mainstay palette for me. It is something that I could travel exclusively with. And that doesn't mean that this is the only look that I could get out of it either. Like I said, I mean, you could use any of these as kind of a one and done. I will never not be excited to use that celestial shade. Like it is when, you know, I always talk about like, you kind of like lose your grit, you lose your, your energy. By the time you get to doing your eyes on your makeup routine sometime, you're just like, oh God, now I have to do my eyes. That's where one and done shadows can be so great. But like, there's something about opening that palette where I'm like, all I gotta do is get this other stuff on and then I can stick my finger in that celestial shade, you know? And like, that makes it all exciting every single time. Plus, yes, I think this will look good on a lot of different people, but like, I'm always excited when I find something that looks really nice on brown eyes. And I think that this looks really great on brown eyes. Also, I didn't add more blush. I don't really feel like I need it. What? Who am I? Another mascara. <laughs> you guys know, it's just not my preference. That's all. And as far, I don't have a lot of experience with waterproof mascara formulas specifically. And so I do know that you have, you have to always use some kind of uh, balm or a remover or something like that, that is going to like break that formula back down. But I will say it really exceeded my patience. Yes, it did. And as you saw in the photo earlier, it was not actually completely bulletproof, waterproof all day. It did kind of spread all over the top of my eyes and it's gonna do it again. But it also didn't like even start to come off in the shower. So I don't really know why it did that, but it for sure did. Like it for sure did and I was not touching my eyes or anything, so. Those are my thoughts on this release. I hope you guys found this valuable. If you did, do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one.